Hi right now, Danny Flex, and welcome to the latest edition of Seconds Out Reflections. I'm here every Monday, 4.30pm, to talk about the boxing action of the weekend just gone. And this week, I'll be paying particular attention to the matchroom show in Liverpool, um, headlined by Conor Ben's impressively destructive victory um, over Chris Algieri, the former WBO super lightweight champion, who surely is not in his prime um, anymore, but still came in off a decent run of form, um, battered Tommy Coyle a couple of years ago, most recently beat Mikel Lespierre, which was a decent result as well. And no one had really destroyed him in the way Conor Ben did, except perhaps Errol Spence, who still took uh, a round longer than Ben did. Now, obviously, that was a few years ago now, and you can't compare it directly. So let's take it for what it is. Probably the best victory on Ben's record so far, and a, a sure sign that he's improved massively from the raw novice that we saw struggling against Cedric Pano only, what, four years ago, something like that. I was looking at his record earlier, and the Pano rematch, where you know he was much better, of course, was only three and a half years ago. It feels like a lot longer. Such is the development and improvement we've seen. And I guess he deserves extra credit, as does his trainer, Tony Sims, for that development being largely played out under stark scrutiny, because he's been on a lot of big bills, only recently uh, main eventing them, but previous, to, uh, I mean, he main evented this one over an undisputed world champion in Katie Taylor. She was relegated to chief support. Um, in Liverpool but just having to deal with the critics especially early on when he was struggling when he was still and he is now a work in progress but when he was you know very raw very limited um, in the early days because he didn't have much of an amateur career to see how far he's come despite or maybe maybe it's helped maybe being under that level of attention has pushed him to work harder in the gym we know he's always crushing it TM um but yeah, maybe that's pushed him to dedicate himself even more to the sport than he would have otherwise. I think I've said before that he comes from a, a you know a relatively wealthy background, and I think probably deserves more credit, not less, for doing so because boxing wasn't his only option. Um, he didn't, he doesn't have to fight, he doesn't have to go into the gym every day, and yet he chooses to. And I think that's pretty uh, pretty impressive, pretty admirable. Um, but getting back to the fight. Um, Algieri never really was allowed into it. Ben was sharp from the off, throwing fast combinations. His footwork in and out was more impressive than it's been in the past. And his head movement particularly to work his way to the inside, the little slips and then punching off those slips was really, really impressive, really you know, fluid, a fluid performance from Ben. And once he was into range, real hard hitting. And no, none of that was tip-fired better than um, by the finishing combination where he fainted a jab, slipped um, Algieri's counter and landed a stiff left jab and a right hand through the guard, bang on the chin, bang on the chin, as uh, Jim Watt used to say is my very worst Scottish impression, although even my best one's not particularly good. Um, yeah, caught him right on the jaw. Um, Algieri crumbled, never looked likely to beat the count. And as I said, you know, Algieri is someone who got up from six knockdowns against Manny Pacquiao back in his prime. And he's not that guy anymore, of course, but still a very, very decent fringe contender at 147 pounds. Now, I've seen since a lot of criticism on social media about Ben's run of opponents that they're, you know, generally on the way down rather than the way up. I think that's a fair comment generally small welterweights or have come up from lighter weights. Again, you know, all I thought Algieri looked the bigger man in the ring in the short time the fight lasted. He's very broad back and shoulders. Um, but yeah, a lot of them have come up from lighter weights or have been smaller than Ben on the night. Ben's not the biggest welterweight, I think it's fair to say, against someone like an Errol Spence, for example, who's huge for 147 pounds. I think Ben would look decidedly small, but he is a very physically strong well to wait and I think they mentioned something like that under the zone commentary that what you give up in the advantages of you know being a massive at the weight you gain in physical strength and being healthy and, and making the weight healthily strongly safely so I understand some of the criticism but I think a lot of it's unfounded given where Ben came from to where he is now you can't fail but be impressed um, by the progress he's made under Tony Sims um, and in the in the public eye as I've said now, Eddie Hearns talks about next steps. Uh, Adrian Broner uh, is the is the favoured opponent. I'm not sure they'll be able to produce enough money 
um, to get him in harness, but you never know. Um, they've talked about doing it, or Ben certainly said he's willing to go over to America to fight him. Broner's obviously a big TV draw out in the States, so and it'd be good to showcase uh, Connor to the US um, audience in their prime time before he gets a world title shot. And there's no major rush. He only turned 25 in September. I know it feels like he's been around forever. But yeah, just 25 years old, not much amateur background, still improving with every fight. And he's not ranked overly highly. He's ranked in the top 10 by three of the four major governing bodies, but no higher than seventh, I believe. That might change after the most recent performance against Algeria. But there is no real need to rush him. Eddie Hearn said before the Algeria fight, we need to see how he looks in this one, but I would think two more after this before a world title shot. I think that's eminently sensible. I think the challenge for the promoter is to keep Ben sellable, marketable against biggest, bigger name opponents while protecting the unbeaten record and not giving him too much too soon in terms of a challenge. I think Broner's a, a smart fight if it can be made. He's not the biggest. And certainly at this stage in his career, his output, his work rate has diminished massively. I think someone young, hungry, fresh like Ben, who's still learning, still hugely committed and enthusiastic about the sport, is exactly what a Broner doesn't need right now. Um, so we shall see if that one gets made. If not, someone along those lines, I know Ben mentioned a few other names in his post-fight interview, including Jordanis Ugas, um, current uh, world champion, of course. And I think most people looking at the three uh, world champions in uh, Errol Spence, Ugas and Terence Crawford would probably um, single out the Cuban as the weakest of the three or, or the least strong might be more apt given it's such a you know immensely deep and talented division but I don't think Ben's ready for Ugas right now by any stretch of the imagination I admire his confidence though I think it's what you want a prospect to say you want him to call out fighters who on paper look too seasoned too good for him right now but then you want his management and promotional team to rein him in a little bit and do what's more sensible for his um, development. Um, so not Ugas just yet, I wouldn't say. Broner's a sensible match. Someone similar kind of idea, maybe a Danny Garcia, but again, it might be a bit too early for that. Um, but maybe the fight after Broner could be a, a Danny Garcia, a Keith Thurman, Sean Poulter, if he hadn't have retired, of course. Someone along those lines, kind of real... Former world champion, still at or near their prime. Um, and someone a bit bigger at the weight as well. So Ben can go up against a world-class full 147 pound. I'd like to see that before he challenges for a world title. But he's done everything I asked of him. He's ticking all the boxes. Needs a bit more seasoning. I know David avanesian has been mentioned. I spoke to his manager, Neil Marsh, this morning. They'll certainly entertain a Conor Ben fight next out. But he's rarely mentioned by Eddie Hearn, uh, Ben's promoter, or by Ben himself. Um, I think they don't feel they need the European title that Amanesian's got, for one thing. But also, I can understand from their point of view, it may seem like too high risk for too little reward. Amanesian's profile's obviously grown since beating Josh Kelly here. Um, but Ben's looking at people like Broner and, uh, you know, Danny Garcia, people like that, who've got bigger names globally, and maybe present less of a threat, or certainly not as close to their top form as someone like Avanesian. Avanesian hasn't proved that he can beat a Danny Garcia level fighter yet, um, but has certainly looked dangerous at European level and, and maybe a bit higher. So I can understand why they might not want that fight right now. That doesn't mean it will never happen, um, but I'd certainly like to see it. I'd certainly like to see Ben get a real tough domestic slash European test um, before he goes in against the likes of an Ugas. Um, but that remains to be seen whether it will happen. Now he's talked about the winner of Calm Brook. I don't think they're going to make a lot of money from that fight. Adam Smith at Sky has already uh, referenced the possibility of a rematch if the first fight is sufficiently close or dramatic or both. Um, so I don't think Ben will be on their radar um, anytime soon. For the same reason that Avanesian's not on Ben's, you know, high risk, lower reward. I mean, Ben is a name and he's growing as a, an attraction, certainly in London. This one was in Liverpool. Um, but I'm not sure he carries quite the um, money-making possibilities to attract a Khan or a Brook who can obviously continue making money against each other. Um, but yeah, overall, overall impressive performance. Ben looks ready to take a marked uh, step up in quality of opposition, and we hope he does that in his next fight, whether it's Broner or someone else. 
And Katie Taylor retained her undisputed uh, lightweight titles on the same show, as alluded to earlier, uh, against Feruza Sharapova, not to be confused with the tennis player, um, Maria Sharapova. But yeah, classy performance from Katie. She may have lost a step. Um, it's hard to say because she may rise to the level of opposition. We shall see early next year when she most likely faces off against longtime rival Amanda Serrano. Um, good win for Robbie Davis Jr. Um, stoppage over Hank Lundy on the bill as well. Um, that was good to see. He's back in the wing column under new trainer Shane McGuigan, and we wait to see where he goes from here. Same with Joe Cordina, got a good um, 10 rounds under his belt um, and another victory for him as he closes in on a world title shot at Super Featherweight. Overall an entertaining show, I enjoyed it. Um, Connor Ben, the main uh, headline coming out of that, a lot of people, while there, were, while there was some negativity on social media, there was also a lot of people highly impressed uh, with his performance and mostly how far he's come um, in such a short time. Savannah Marshall tweeted about it this morning and I retweeted it. It was, she said, you know, what a job Tony Sims has done and I think he deserves immense credit but so does Connor himself for putting in the dedication, recognising that early on his star power outweighed his ability and not letting his ego get in the way of learning and realising he wasn't anywhere near the finished article at the time and putting in the necessary toil, the necessary time to get to where he needs to be and he's still not there yet which is why I can forgive their uh, incredibly patient approach with him and also the fact that he has recently turned 25 so he's one of the younger fighters in the division in comparisons with the likes of Virgil Ortiz and Boots Ennis while understandable given their you know position in the division is a little unfair on Ben because he didn't have the amateur pedigree or start as young as those guys did um, but yeah that's what I thought of it I'd like to hear your views on all things Connor Ben let me know below in the comments section and I will respond to some of them I'll be back on Thursday for Flex Expectations looking ahead to another busy weekend of boxing which includes the Derek Chisora Joseph Parker rematch um, and obviously Jake Paul going another rematch now uh, after Tommy Fury's withdrawal going up against Tyrone Woodley, uh, Tyrone Woodley once again um, so I'll be looking forward to that and there's plenty of other action going on at the weekend um, I'll also be back for the following week uh, Monday for reflections um, so same time um, yeah and that's it I appreciate you all watching and I'll see you all soon cheers and uh, even though it's early because you can see the tree in the background I feel I should say congr uh, festive what is it compliments of the season that's it it took me a while and uh, Merry Christmas, although there will be more vlogs before the big day and, you know, Santa comes with his bulging sack of toys. Thanks very much. See you soon.